All right, good morning. Um, I do have some announcements. I hope you guys had a good weekend, um, but I'm going to wait until all the late people show up. I normally don't, but they need to hear this. Um, so, um, yeah, it's about it's regarding the exams. So I'm going to I'm going to get into the lesson and I will give some announcements to catch all those late people before they leave to play Fortnite or whatever they do. Um, anyhow, um, the last time we were together, I taught lesson two one. Um, which was actually transforming absolute value functions and writing functions given a graph. And I also introduced the second form. So now you have two forms. And one of the questions people were asking me is, how do you know which form? So I'll just tell you, page 71, problems one and two were form one. And problems three and four were form two. Just a reminder that lesson two one is due tonight at 11:59. So hopefully you're done with it. So you can ask me questions. But if you waited to do it, that that's not a good habit to get into because I am teaching a new lesson today. And you should be pretty much done with two one. You should have done two one yesterday after you took the exam. All right. Anybody want to ask me any questions? about 2-1. I'll get all you guys showing your video. Um, I have said that if students continue not to show their video, I'm not going to show my video, which should be, should be real interesting. Um, that means you will not see my lessons. You will only hear them. So there's a couple classes that are that close to being there because I'm not going to mess with them respectful you know the fact that i have to show my video but you don't so i'm going to shut them off um, and they will not see my video so um you guys are pretty good though and um, you guys have always been pretty good ever since i asked you um you guys are pretty good about showing your video and i appreciate that all right any questions about two one it should have been pretty straightforward from the previous lesson All right, what we're going to do today is lesson 2-2. Two, two. And lesson 2-2 two, two is solving absolute value equations. So this would have come in he uh, helpful in the previous section, but you know, overlaps, and so this would have been good to know with some of those previous problems. Okay, this is California Common Course A dash R E I point three point one. And I'm going to show you how to solve these two different ways. We're going to solve them using a graphical approach, which has nothing to do with math. We're going to be using the calculator. And absolute value equations. Having to do with math. So the first thing I want to talk about is this graphical approach, and I don't know who came up with it. Uh, somebody had a lot of time on their hands and figured this out. So let me show you this. You need to have your calculator on hand. Okay, hold on, that's equals two. So what you're going to do is you're going to, this is one graph, but we're not looking at the actual graph. We're going to split it into two graphs. So on the graphing calculator under Y sub 1, you're going to put two, the left side, 2 times the absolute value of X minus 5 minus 4, and under Y sub 2, 
you're going to put the horizontal line by equals two. So your graph on the calculator is going to be a horizontal line through y equals two, and it's going to have this graph. And we're going to look at these points. And these points, since y is equal to two, are going to be at something two. All right, so let me show you how to put this in the calculator. So you see all these function keys up here at the top? This one is the equation editor. And we're gonna be using second trace to use the intersect feature. So turn on your calculator on the bottom left and go to y equals the equation editor and put this in. Now, if there's something in your calculator already, clear it out, but you're gonna put in two and the absolute value is under the math key. So you pick the math key and move your arrow over to num and pick intersect. I'm sorry, pick absolute value one. Okay, then you're gonna put in X minus five, X is to the alpha key, minus five, parenthesis, minus four. So it should look like this. Now you're gonna put in, with the arrow key, go down to y sub two and put in y equals two. That's what you should have. So now hit graph and graph is up on the right and you should get something that looks like that. Okay, does anybody have any questions so far? I'm gonna do this about four times, so. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. So first, we're gonna pick the, wait. Do you guys need time to put this in the calculator? So first we hit the Y on the top left and then we hit math. No. You hit the Y on the top left and put in two, then go to math and pick ABS for absolute value. And then put in X, which is next to the alpha key, minus five, close parenthesis, minus four. Then you use the arrow key and go to Y sub two and put in two. I did not mention this to my other periods, but there is an online calculator, um, the TI-83. It might be hard to, it's, it's much better to have it in your hand looking at it, these math problems. But if you do not have a calculator for whatever reason, um, there is an online TI-83 TI calculator. You now, you just trace, and you're gonna see it a list, a menu, and you're going to What's going to happen, I call this thing a spider. It puts a spider above the line there. And when you hit enter, the spider is going to jump to the other graph. And when you hit enter again, the calculator is going to say, do you want me to guess? It's not really guessing. It's giving you the ordered pair zero, two. Well, guess what? This real graph crossing the y-axis at zero, zero. So let's go through this again. So you're gonna go to second trace and you're gonna pick the intersect feature. And now you're gonna use the arrow key and move the square over there. You move them over there, 
You're gonna hit enter and the spider's gonna jump to the other graph and you're gonna hit enter and then the calculator's gonna say, do you want me to guess? And it's not really guessing. It's giving you the ordered pair eight, two. And that's where the other solution is of the actual graph. The actual graph is crossing at zero, zero and eight, zero. Graphical representation on the calculator has math. These are where the actual graph is crossing the x-axis at zero, zero, and eight, zero. Okay, I'm gonna work like two or three more problems. Um, do you guys wanna ask me about this one before I erase? All right, let's try another one. So you're going to put the left side under y sub one, and you're gonna use the math, go over to num, two, you're gonna put y equals one. So you should be getting a graph that looks like a V on the line, and we're gonna focus on the x coordinates of those points. And these points are gonna be something one, the actual solutions to the real function. Okay, does everybody know where to find the ABS key? Everybody knows where to find X? Can you repeat how to put it inside the calculator? Go under Y equals the equation editor. And you're gonna put in the math key and pick ABS under num. And you're just gonna put in X, which is next to alpha minus close parenthesis minus two and then go down to Y sub two, one and hit. I do that, but then it just gives me an invalid error. Um, that means you input in something wrong. So if it ever gives you a an error like that, you input something wrong. So syntactically, you have something wrong. So you have to make sure it's put in the calculator exactly like this. So it should look like this. I put mine under the wrong one. It should look like that under y sub one, y sub two. Could you lower your calculator a little bit? I have mine like that and it's still giving me the error. I'm gonna reset your calculator, go to second mem, second mem down here, second mem. After you do that, pick number seven, pick number one, and then pick number two for reset your calculator. Then go back under Y sub, go to math, go to num, and pick ABS. 
x minus one, close parenthesis, minus two, and then y equals one and graph. It works now. Yeah. Wait, after the minus two, we just leave it blank and then press enter? Close parenthesis minus. Okay, let's go on. So you go to second trace and you pick the intersect feature number five. So second trace is right here, second trace. Second trace. The spider, move the spider over here somewhere. So use the arrow keys and move this. You do that, hit enter, and the spider's going to jump. It's going to say second curve, hit enter. And then it says, do you want me to? You go to, and you pick the intersect feature number five, and you use the arrow key and move the spider over there somewhere. After you get them over there, don't put them right on the spot either. And the spider's gonna jump to the other one, and you hit enter, and the calculator wants to guess. It's not really guessing. It's giving you right four up one. That means four is another solution. So these ordered pairs in and of themselves don't mean anything. The solutions are the X coordinates. And the solutions are saying that this actual graph is crossing at left two, zero, right four, zero. Okay, do you want me to do one more? Or do you want me to, can I go on? One more, please. So under y sub one, you would put three times the absolute value of x plus one. And under y sub two, you would put y equals nine. So you have a horizontal line passing at nine, y equals nine. And you have an absolute value function. And we're focusing on those points. Which So you're gonna put this in the equation editor. So you go under y equals and clear everything out. And you're gonna put three, go to math at num, absolute value of x next to the alpha key plus parenthesis. And under y sub two, you're putting y equals nine and hit graph. Now you can barely see this, so you might, the window, you can change the window setting to get what you want. So this is a rectangular viewing window. So let's say the graph is over here somewhere. You could change the window setting to capture the graph. The, the window isn't always gonna capture your graph. Can we go on or do you need a minute or two? 
So now you go to second trace and you pick the intersect feature. And the minute you pick that, it should be up there, take them up there somewhere. Put them down below if you want. See mine? My spider ended up over here, which is okay. So now when I hit enter, he's going to jump to the other graph. But I know that he jumped somewhere. And I'm going to hit enter. Hold on, I hit a key and messed my thing up. Right to up nine. So now I'm going to go back and do it again, do second trace. Five for the intersect feature. And now I have to move my spider. I'm just going to move him straight across. And now I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to hit enter for the second curve. And now it wants me to guess. So my two solutions of my real problem are left and right to zero. Okay, now, if you didn't quite follow that, you can watch my YouTube video and watch it over and over again, rewind or whatever you need to do, but um, you should be able to watch the YouTube video and get it. Anybody want to ask anything before I fix it? All right, well, I have some announcements regarding the exam, and I need you to listen. First of all, for, four, for all exams, all the scratch paper with your problems. So right now I have students submitting two problems. I'm not gonna accept that. If I assign 20 problems, you have to send and work for 20 problems. That means if you have to take pictures of five pages, take pictures of five pages. You have 15 minutes to submit it. If it's late, I'm not going to accept it, which means you're getting a zero on the exam. And I have talked to people um, with extenuating circumstances. I have a phone. I already know about those people. But for the rest of you, you are expected to turn your stuff in on time. The scratch paper needs to look like this. I need you to pay attention because I got people writing sideways. I got people not numbering problems. I got people writing like this, but this is how it should be done. And if, if, you, if you're already doing your work like this and you got a hundred, so there are people that got a hundred percent on this and are doing perfect work. I'm not talking to you. So you should number the problems, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And over here, you start, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. It must be written like this. If you do not write it like this, I'm not even looking at your stuff. I'm over it. I spent 12 hours from 10 in the morning yesterday till 10 at night, looking at remind messages, looking at emails, of like a hundred people, and I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm over that. And it's all because students want me to treat them as individuals, and you want me to do that 150 times, and I'm not gonna do So this is how I want the scratch paper done. Does anybody have any questions about how I want the scratch paper done?
the exams have to be taken when I give them. So I had one person say that they were chasing their dog down the street, missed the exam. I had one student say he slept in. I had another student say they had to go to the grocery store. No. If you do not take the exam, I want a parent conference. Your parents and you to have a meeting online. So you can't call, you can't remind me now, you can't send a message. You missed the exam. I'm gonna schedule, a, you need to schedule a parent conference with me if you want something other than a zero. It takes me like 12 steps to create a new exam and I'm not gonna do it. It's taking too much time of my life. Now, you have to do the evaluate, you guys, because you have to know how to input the problems. And I can tell who's not doing the evaluate. So let me show you some things I saw. In pre-calculus, the answer was three and somebody wrote T-H-R-E-E. -E. First, the computer. You have a brain. You know those are the same thing, but this computer doesn't know. It has no idea. In the answer is power, and a student wrote this. X times three-fourths. Well, that's not even the same thing. So, of course, it was wrong. In Algebra 2, they ask you to write a function of f. And some people wrote h of f. Recognize that. So I was thinking about this. This is very good practice for you. Because in the spring, you might have to take the CASP, which is online. And on future classes in college, you might have to do things online. You have to know how to input things correctly. So how do you know? You have to go through the evaluate. How do they want the answers? How am I supposed to put them in? How do I put a fraction in? How do I put a function in? How do I do this? Because I can tell, I can, last period, when I was talking about this exam, one of my students said, Ms. Birch, I did so many evaluate problems. That was so easy because I just, I knew exactly how to input. It's that practice makes perfect thing. So I can tell doing the evaluate because you don't know how to enter them. And guess what? You have to, it's this class. So you enter stuff like this, I'm gonna mark it wrong. Don't ask me to grade it. All right, so you have to know how to input things. And I feel like you should, if you're doing the evaluate and I'm assigning them. Okay, we are gonna talk about the length of the exam and I do want your feedback if you think the exam's too long. Um, a normal complaint. Your test is too long. So, you know what I go by. You know, if I can minutes, you should be able to do it in 60. So in my opinion, you are not as prepared as what you need to be because you're having to think too much. So you shouldn't have to think on an exam. You should be able to go, oh, she wants me to do a transformation. Brr, this is what I do. Oh, she wants me to write a function from this graph. This is what I do. Oh, I have to answer this on the computer. This is what I do. I mean, it can't be pondering. You have to know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, in my opinion, you did not study like you should have. A lot of time, when you take a final in college, they're not going to give you extra time. You have to finish it in a timely manner. So for some like me, I like to check my problems over and over again. You can't do that. You got to you got to finish the exam and then go back and check your problems over again. And this is the last thing. Make sure you listen. If things do not improve, 
I'm not going to give you these short exams anymore. So instead of having exam two, three, four, I'm going to give you one, one through one, five. Because that's going to be less grading for me. Because I'm not. So unless you want less exams that are more comprehensive and you're not going to like that, you better straighten up and fly right. So I'm going to say that one more time. I am going to be making, instead of short exams, I'm going to be making exams like one, one through one, five. So it's less grading for me. So get going. I don't want to spend 12 hours when I should just be able to look at the exams and record them. That's all I should have to do. I shouldn't have to be looking at late scratch paper, late exams, late this. Didn't submit the exam. I mean, it's, it's nuts. It's crazy. It's crazy right now. And I'm over it. So I'm just letting you know. Okay, so I want to hear your feedback about the. So was it perfect? Was it like it was too long and why? But I'm going to give you the opportunity right now to talk to me about that. Otherwise, I'm going to make the problem. I'm going to make 20 problems again. So um, if you want to make comments, feel free to comment. I thought it was a pretty good link. It was a good link. Personally, I felt that it was a good link, maybe like one or two problems less because I was struggling towards the end. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you this. Was it the complexity of the problems or was it the inputting stuff? The inputting stuff. For me, stuff. it was inputting. Yeah, it was the input. Putting stuff is way harder than actually solving it. Okay. All right. So what I, I'm going to be cognizant of this. I'm going to try to knock the problems down a little bit. And then what I need you guys to do, practice more on the evaluate so you can become better at inputting things. So somebody last period or last period said, Ms. Birch, why do we show any work? We could just, we know what, we know what these are. Why do we have to show work? And I'm going to tell you why. The AP calculus teacher, the honors algebra two teacher, and sometimes I'm the honors pre-cal teacher. We believe that you have to be able to do two things. You have to be able to write your problems down and you have to be able to work online. You have to be able to do both. Because you do realize when we go back to school, your exams aren't going to be multiple choice. Your exams are not going to be online. Your exams are going to all be open-ended. And if you can't show your work, you're going to be in deep trouble. And the reason for this is because in your calculus classes, in your college level classes, you are going to have to be able to show your work. So you need to be able to do both. You need to be able to input correct information and you have to be able to show your work on paper and the high level math features are in um, concur about this. So we do believe this together that you guys have to be able to write a problem and show your work vertically. See, you have to understand that me and Mr. Johnston are forced to give these online tests because we're in this distance learning. But given the choice, we're not going to give you online tests. We're giving you open-ended problems to see if you conceptually understand what's going on. So in other words, you'll be exposed and your work will be exposed and you have to be able to show your work because you're gonna have to do that later. So trying to train you on how to crawl so you can eventually run. Okay, so I will watch, um, I will watch what I'm doing. I'll, I'll try to break down the problems a little bit, but I need you guys to um, prepare by working problems. You guys have got to practice those, evaluate problems over and over again. Make sure you know what you're doing. All right, so let's solve something algebraically.
So this is solving mathematically. Okay, here are the steps. You're going to isolate the absolute value itself. You're going to write a disjunction. And a disjunction is a compound sentence with an or. And then you're going to solve for x. All right, so to isolate the absolute value here, you're going to get the absolute value of 3x equals 6. Now we write a disjunction. So in other words, in order to get rid of those bars, you have a compound sentence. And the positive case is this. And the negative case Right? What's inside? So when you divide by three, you get x equals two. And when you divide by negative three, x equals negative two. Solutions are negative two and two. Now, I wanna talk about this for a second. You notice how there's no y? We're not in two dimensions, so we're not in the Cartesian coordinate plane. We're on a number line. So if they ask you to graph the solution, so they may say solve and graph on a number line. Draw the number line. Label the number line. And you'll graph the points on the number line. So negative two. Okay, any questions about solving an absolute value equation algebraically? Want to try another one real quick? Can I erase this? Yeah, can we try another one? Yeah. Try something a little more complicated. So they want you to solve and graph on the number line. So the steps are isolate the absolute value. So we're gonna add two to both sides. Don't get rid of that. Keep the bars. Divide both sides by three. Four X minus five is equal to seven. Absolute value. And now we write a disjunction. So to get rid of the bars, we're gonna have the positive case and the negative case. Now pay attention closely to this. If you multiply that by a negative one, you get a positive. And if you multiply that by a negative one, you get a negative. So a lot of times teachers will just say, write, write whatever you see on the left and negate the right side. But if somebody asks you, hey, why can you do that? You're multiplying both sides by a negative one. 
that by doing that, I'm saving you two or three steps. Because if you distribute, you're going to get a negative X, and we don't want a negative X. So I'll show you. You're multiplying both sides by a negative one. So that becomes positive, that becomes negative. So if you add five, you get four X equals 12, divide by four, X is equal to three. Over here, if you add five, you get four X is equal to negative two. And if you divide four, you get X is equal to negative one half, yeah. So I have a question. For the right side, we're going to multiply by the, uh, well, we're going to negate both sides to get rid of it, basically? Yeah. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm multiplying both sides by a negative one so that I can skip a couple steps. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Yep. So there's your two solutions. Now, sometimes people don't even write, but I want you to know if somebody asks you, hey, how can you do that? How can you just write that? You're gonna show them the negative case and how you multiplied both sides by a negative one. Most teachers do not show this and it confuses students because they're like, how did they go from, how did they go from this problem to that? Okay, now, this is not in classroom yet, um, just because I spent 12 hours going over your exam. So I'm going to write the assignment on the board, and you can get started on it. Uh, there's a bunch of problems you can do up to this point. So this won't be the only part of the assignment. Well, the other parts. Okay, so that's it for today. Hang out and ask me any questions you can, but you have a good day. And I'll see you, what, Friday? So, yeah. You have all of the last assignment to do. You should be almost done with the last assignment. So, it's due tonight. All right, have a good day. I'm going to turn off the recorder. You can hang out with me if you want.